Hello, dear students. How is your day? I hope you are all good. In this video lesson, I'm going to show to you an evidence that a solution is saturated. By watching this video, you can check whether you follow the right procedure in your performance task for output. This activity is based from module 4, uh, the activity 3, entitled, What is the evidence that the solution is saturated? The objectives of this activity are First one is to show the evidence that a solution is saturated and the second one is to tell the maximum amount of sugar that can completely dissolve in a 20 milliliter water in room temperature. So these are the materials for this activity. Sugar, 20 milliliters of water, a tiny transparent glass, a one-half teaspoon measuring spoon, and a stirrer. So let us start by pouring these 20 milliliters of water into this tiny uh, glass container. Okay, so that's 20 milliliters of water. And then, let's add one half teaspoon of sugar into the water and stir it until the until the particles of the sugar completely dissolves in the water. So now, we created a solution, a solution of sugar. And as you can see, it is transparent, it's a clear solution. When sugar is dissolved in water, the particles of the sugar get between spaces of the particles of water and creates a single phase of solution. This solution is classified as unsaturated because it contains less solute than the maximum amount it can dissolve at a given temperature. Let me now add one half teaspoon of sugar into the solution. And then, I'm going to stir it to dissolve the sugar. Still, the particles have dissolved into the solution. Adding another one half teaspoon of sugar, fourth time. This is the fifth time I'm adding one half teaspoon of sugar into the solution. Stir it again and let us try to see if the particles of the sugar still dissolves in the solution. As you can see, the particles are dissolved in the water. Now, let me add again one half teaspoon of sugar into the solution for the sixth time. At this point, there is already three teaspoons of sugar in this solution and look at the the particles are completely dissolved and it looks yellowish this time let me add another one half teaspoon of sugar into the solution okay 
Okay, stirring it again to dissolve the sugar. So this is now three and a half teaspoons of sugar in the solution. Let's try to see if the solution could still dissolve the particles of the sugar completely. So, as you can see, the particles of sugar still dissolves in the solution. So, let us add another um, half teaspoon of sugar into the solution. And stir. This is the eighth time. So, this is about um, four teaspoons of sugar in the solution already. Look at that! Still, the particles of the sugar are dissolved in the solution. So, let us now add another one half teaspoon of sugar into the solution for the ninth time. And stir. So there's four and a half teaspoons of sugar. of the sugar has completely dissolved in the water. So let me add another one half teaspoon of sugar and this is the tenth time. So so there is about five teaspoons of sugar in this solution. Particles of the sugar are almost dissolved. Let me add another half teaspoon of sugar, and this is the eleventh time. Let's see if the solution could still dissolve all the particles of this sugar for the eleventh time. This time, the sugar in this solution is already five and a half teaspoon. The particles of the sugar have completely dissolved in the solution. And remember, it's the eleventh time. So let us add now another one half teaspoon of sugar to the solution and try to see if all the particles will dissolve in the solution this time. This is the twelfth time and um, the amount of sugar in this solution is now six teaspoons. At this step, I observe that there is already excess sugar which did not dissolve. The solution reaches already a point at which it cannot dissolve more solute. And the sugar that I added starts to sink to the bottom in solid form. I allow the solution to sit for a while so the undissolved particles will be able to sink at the bottom of the water and here are the particles these particles can no longer dissolve in the solution 
from the activity, I have observed that there is a maximum amount of solute, like sugar, that can be solved in a given amount of solvent, like water, at a certain temperature. The process which took place between sugar and water is called the solubility of the solute. A solution that contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved by a given amount of solvent is called a saturated solution. So, an example of a saturated solution is this one. Okay? It contains the maximum amount of solute that dissolves in the solvent. The presence of an excess solid, like the ones in the bottom, there, which can no longer dissolve is an evidence that the solution is saturated. A solution is unsaturated when it contains less solute than the maximum amount it can dissolve at a given temperature. So what do you think would happen if the water was hot? What would happen to the solute or the excess sugar if I hit the solution over a flame? Do you think the excess sugar will dissolve in the heated solution? How do you think a supersaturated solution would look like? Well, that is another activity to do in another video. Thank you for watching, dear students. Hope you learned something from this video lesson. Remember, with self-discipline, self-learning is possible. A positive mind brings positive vibes and leads a positive life. Until next video, goodbye!